Med Purity Live. We're hoping for no Facebook issues like we had last week, but glad to be on again. I'm Joe Galatly. I'm Amanda Hepper. And we are the co-founders of Med Purity. We're looking forward to really an interesting discussion for the next few minutes about one of or the largest breach yes. yet from a, a HIPAA compliance standpoint. So we're going to dissect that. Feel free to put any comments in if you're watching live so we can answer any questions or engage with you. And thanks for watching. So I'm going to go into a little more detail about Anthem, as Joe had mentioned. Their fine was $16 million that was given by the OCR. What happened was in March of 2015, Anthem uh, filed a breach report that in January they discovered cyber attackers had gained access to their systems and exfiltrated almost 79 million patient records, unique patient records. And so the history goes back to actually uh, an employee that opened a phishing email wow. yeah. in February of 2014. And by the way, this is a this is associate of Anthem's that manages claims for them that is also called Anthem mm. for, for sake of the conversation. Yeah. So that clarifies everything. Yeah, that clarifies everything, right. So yeah. So these hackers were in their system from February 2014 through December and in from December to January, they had started exfiltrating this information which is interesting because the hackers stayed in the system for that long before they started uh, getting information. It is said that they believe this was a, um, a state attack, a foreign state attack. So they believe it was a foreign government that was behind this. And so not a lot of discrete details have been shared because of that. I'm sure there's other investigations going on. Uh, so, should we just dive into some of the issues? Yeah, so, so you mentioned phishing, which yes. is obviously something that I think is being more and more of, of uh, an issue that we're aware that we need to educate staff to yes. be very paranoid, exactly. right? Opening their emails of anything suspicious because right. those are getting really clever. And that was in 2014 and they've only gotten more uh, creative in either impersonating leadership or uh, suggesting you need to log in to verify some internet traffic or to um, reset your password, those type of things. It seems like those have only gotten more creative. So first first thing it sounds like um, out of this is just a reminder to be instilling that paranoia in your staff when it comes to yeah, email. That's right. Just like I was sharing with you yesterday, I was afraid to open an email from somebody that we actually had met several months ago because it was a Gmail account, and I was like, uh, <laughs> I'm not sure if this is correct or not. So that paranoia is a good thing. It's good. Yeah. Right. Um, so they have got access to 90 systems in, within mm -hmm. Anthem, including their data warehouses, which is where they extracted this information. So part of the issue was that they had failed to identify that hackers were in their system for that long, too. Right. Yeah. So to set up policies, procedures, to regularly review your systems, those are part of the findings that they had, mm. which is a good thing to remember to do, right? You can have the policy and procedure, but if you're not doing what it says, you need to do. Right. So was it in the in the uh, description of the event? Is mm -hmm. it clear whether they had policies that address that, or did they not? have policies that really spoke to they, You know what, it, it isn't really clear. They needed to beef up their policies and procedures. Uh, one of the findings in the corrective action plan was to conduct an enterprise security risk assessment, which lets be to believe that they hadn't done that. Yeah, okay. So, and then of course with that is to have your mitigation plan with the issues that are identified in your risk analysis. Yeah. Right. So that's another takeaway, it sounds like, is right. just that reminder that seems to be threaded through most of these to conduct that risk assessment on a regular basis and to yeah. take lessons learned and work them. Right. Take uh, remediation items that you find and address right. them. Right. Yep. Oh, what else? This is this is packed full of new lessons here. Um, 
Okay. Yeah. Insufficient procedures to regularly review information system activities. So they did not have the procedures okay. to, to, to do that, to even do that, gotcha. right? So um, one interesting thing, I listened to a few, pod, a few podcasts on this, Richard Severino, who's the director of the OCR, mm -hmm. said that he understands that large healthcare systems will be targets, naturally. And therefore, they also should have very beefed up security policies and procedures to protect their, their information, right? And Anthem apparently did not do that. Have, right? He called it a big, juicy, egregious data breach. Yes. I don't want him to talk about any of our clients that way. <laughs> and that the largest healthcare breach in history fully merits the largest HIPAA settlement in history. Wow. Last time we talked about the fact that it was $16 million, the largest um, penalty. However, Anthem spent $400 million, almost $400 million in addressing this to date. That doesn't account all of the work to address the corrective action plan moving wow. forward. Yeah. So, um, they need to provide their risk assessments. We talked a little bit about this last time too. OCR full review. OCR is going to be working with them diligently for the next couple of years, making sure that they're doing everything that they need to do. Um, oh, fail to implement adequate minimum access controls to prevent cyber attackers from accessing PHI. So to have those kind of policies and procedures in place is very important. And one thing that we have found that's very um, important for our clients is to go through drills and tests, mm -hmm. right? So if you discover that there is, pretend that there is a breach, then what are all of the steps that you go through to, to protect that, to contain it? Do you understand what your incident reporting is? Do all your employees understand that? The breach notification process, the timelines involved with that? So that's, so for cost is way more than the breach of penalty. Yes. So looking at that and trying to attach an ROI to 16 million really, or to investing to prevent something like that, it's really a much more significant uh, cost to the organization. It that is. Happens. But it also sounds like he was saying that the, the standards for a large organization are higher, even though everybody's under the same rule mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. you're going to be, it's, it is, somewhat based on the size and maturity of the organization, their expectations of where you're gonna be from a compliance standpoint and what you put in place. That is the impression I got from that quote too, so. Yeah. Because it's um, what is addressable, right, for your organization required versus addressable mm -hmm. comments, and a lot of times that is regarding the size of your organization. Doesn't mean you don't need to do what it says. Right. Right, but uh, as far as the sophistication of your tools, just having a general awareness or some minimal tools isn't enough once, you've, once you're responsible for apparently 69 million patients. Right. right. So then did you say, is there a delay in reporting the breach? There was, there was a delay. The delay was when the hackers got in, in February 2014, through when they discovered it had occurred, which I, I believe was in March. So they were a little late to the game mm -hmm. on yeah. hackers moving yeah. around in their systems. From what I understand, they'll get in through an email, they might look around and take their time to, uh, to do their extraction of information, right? They wanna get the biggest bang for their buck apparently. So, but through tools, and through policies, you can discover. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, so anything else that came out of that that we should take away? Um, let's see. So there's a lot of work following the event too, as far as it's not just the cost and then you move forward, but mm -hmm. you have the you have the Office of Civil Rights helping for a while, it sounds yeah, like. for two years, right. Involved in how you are on this plan where you have to turn things around in certain timelines. That's right. So um, so a lot of work and cost comes out of it after, right. after the fact. So top takeaways of what I've heard here is 
Um, certainly, again, that paranoia around opening emails mm -hmm. and being very mm -hmm. aware of the prevalence of phishing, uh, potentially doing phishing exercises, right, yes. that allow you to uh, train your staff to send out emails to track how many they've opened and uh, follow up with education mm -hmm. that will begin to help everyone be very aware of how deceptive those, uh, those emails can be. Mm -hmm. And then being prepared for in the event of a breach, what do we do, how do we respond to it, how do we identify that it happened in the first right. place. Right. So policies around right. that so we're prepared. Right. So as you said, you covered training, so that's part of what you need to do for your employees and the OCR in their corrective action plans said that they needed to make sure after they approved their training program that all employees had to be trained within 30 days. I have no idea how many employees they have, but I'm sure it's probably thousands, yeah. right? Wow. And then all new employees will be trained within 30 days of hire. Wow. And then one more thing I think I heard there was, sorry, was uh, that this is a partner, business associate. Yes. So it yeah. brings in your third party risk management too, because this, the, uh, the cost was really bared by Anthem, the big company, mm -hmm. but it was the outsourced company that actually started That's the right. whole situation. So, so managing and being aware of and holding your vendors accountable That's right. to training their staff to having the policies in place and complying themselves as well. Right, right. Knowing who your yeah. business associates are, having the agreement and staying on top of what they are doing, right? Doing surveys, having them do self-assessments. Yeah, well, well, Anthem, thank you for this case study. <laughs> hey, um, we uh, will probably unpack a couple more of these and see what lessons we should take and respond to as well. Any final right. thoughts on that? Oh, good job, I think that's absolutely right. Thanks for sharing that with us. And so we'll be back next week and we are starting to line up some great uh, guests as well to bring some interesting topics here that we appreciate you watching. And we'll catch you next week, same time.